Welcome to this video. Today I want to talk about digital fingerprinting, what it is, and how it threatens your privacy online. Down in the notes, down in the video description, I will link to this article from Wired.com as well as this one from TechReviewAdvisor.com. Both are good reads, both are good introductions and informations to what this is. But to summarize, historically, advertisers and online companies have tracked users by using their IP address or cookies. But over the years, VPNs have become much more popular, which allows the user to change their IP address. And even browsers have done more to block cookies and other types of tracking that come from that. And so these online services have looked for other means, other ways to track users. And that's where fingerprinting comes in is they look for unique things about you, your device, your browser, all of that to create a unique profile, a unique fingerprint that follows you everywhere you go online. And this can be very threatening because it can be difficult to change those things. Here we can see some categories of of information that's being grabbed or believed to be used for fingerprinting. It can be anything from your operating system to fonts, to your time zone, to your browser, type of browser, extensions, the hardware in your computer or device that you're using, behavior. And there are tools out there that you can use to identify how unique you are. For example, and I will link all of these down in the notes, down in the video description, but you can use amiunique.org. Cover your tracks is also a great tool. Browserleaks.com, which has some dedicated tests for fingerprint Printing, but all of these can be used for fingerprinting. And the privacytest.org, which has a very small section dedicated to fingerprinting resistance, but all of this can be applicable to overall privacy. But I do want to note that these tests can be easily misinterpreted. It's not as simple as just coming here and looking for the browser that gives you the most green percentages. A lot of it is situational, a lot of it's context. But the big thing to take away from tools like this is learning what is used to make you unique and the importance of using tools tools to help protect your privacy. And so the question comes up, well, how do you make yourself less unique? How do you blend into a crowd? And a common argument is, well, just use Windows and Google Chrome. That's the biggest crowd, the most common crowd. And while it is true that is the biggest crowd, it's also the crowd that is less protected against privacy. And so just imagine that crowd or herd, you know, it's really big. A lot of people are in it, but at the same time, everybody's holding up signs and wearing t-shirts with all their information on it. And so you want to move to the crowd, even though it's smaller, you want move to the crowd that also helps protect you and isn't just advertising your information and giving it away and also work towards growing that crowd at the same time. And to that end, let's talk about some steps you can take to increase your privacy and security, not just against fingerprinting, but privacy in general online. The first thing is use as few online services as possible. And I know it's 2025, everyone uses online everything, but there is such a thing as better and worse options. And so for example, social Social media, extremely notorious for gathering as much information as possible and not caring about privacy of their users. And so yes, we're on YouTube right now, which is a social media platform. Thank you for being here. But if you're not getting a clear benefit from an online service or a social media platform or something that you're using, don't use it. The next thing I'll mention is try to use online services or websites that don't require you to log in. For example, again, here on YouTube, you do not have to be logged in to view a YouTube video via the website. And so stuff like that is very important important. The moment you log into something online immediately, they don't need any more tracking. They know exactly who you are. The third thing is use a VPN. And yes, as I mentioned earlier, this is just one of the older ways that has been used to track you and fingerprinting involves a lot more other data points, but still you want to protect your IP address. And so to that end, you want to use a good VPN. The key word being good VPN. There's a lot of bad VPNs out there. A lot of what are believed to be honey pots, a lot of VPNs that do collect your data. And so when you're looking at VPN services, you want to make sure that you're using one that increases your privacy, doesn't give you a false sense of protection, and isn't making things worse. And to that point, you want to only look at iVPN, Molvad, Proton, or Winscribe. None of these are sponsors. It's just a simple truth that these are the only VPNs that you should look at when it comes to increasing your privacy and security. And then the fourth thing is you need to use a privacy-oriented web browser. Google Chrome is not privacy-oriented. Neither is my Microsoft Edge, nor is the Opera web browser. And yes, you can add extensions to Google Chrome that will increase the privacy. And yes, Opera and even Edge will advertise privacy protections and fingerprinting protections, but they are not privacy web browsers. There's a lot of concerns about those three grabbing telemetry and Google Chrome does not care about fingerprinting protection. And as I mentioned earlier, adding more and more extensions to try to make it more private just makes you more unique, more 
identifiable. And so stop using those three web browsers. Which browsers should you use? A good place to start if you are on Mac OS is Safari. Again, Apple is not a privacy company, but they have made steps forward as far as privacy. And so again, Safari is a good place to start. Very easy. It's built in. It's already on your Mac. The DuckDuckGo web browser, also a good option to switch to if you're looking to get started. Very simplistic, easy. Firefox is another option, especially if you want to get away from Chromium-based web browsers. Fingerprint blocking is built into it. And Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox, has made some questionable privacy decisions in recent years. And so if you're worried about that, you can also try Waterfox, which is Firefox-based. All four of these are a good place to start, but keep in mind, they're not the best. They do require some tweaking. So out of the box, it doesn't have everything. For example, you do need to add an ad blocker to most of these. uBlock Origin is strongly recommended. I don't believe it's allowed on Safari, but the light version, I believe, is available. DuckDuckGo, I don't believe you can add it at all, but it does have its built-in fingerprint protection. Firefox and Waterfox, you'll need to add it to both of those. And so the point being, these are good places to start, but they don't have everything out of the box. If you want to go up a level that has even better protection and better protection right out of the box that requires minimal changing, the Brave web browser and LibreWolf are two really good options. Brave is really good for those coming from Google Chrome. It's Chromium based, you'll feel right at home. And LibreWolf is Firefox based. And between the two, LibreWolf is a little bit better in privacy, but Brave probably does a little bit better job as far as usability and balancing convenience versus privacy. And so it just comes down to personal preference, personal use case as to which you wanna use. Again, out of the box, pretty much everything's there for both browsers. You might need to tweak some things here and there, but for the most part, you should be good to go. If you wanna go up even further, up another tier, the Molvad browser is even better. And in this browser, this is where you're going to start to experience some inconvenience and some things not working correctly. For example, if you try to use YouTube in Molvad, it's not going to work, but the privacy is really, really good. And then if you just wanna take things to the max, the maximum privacy that you can possibly get from a browser, Tor is the best. It's slow, it's not convenient. A lot of things are not going to work. Some sites will block you, but for the websites it does work with, again, really good privacy protection. The point being is there's a lot of alternative options to the three I mentioned earlier that are really bad, Chrome, Edge, and Opera. Just don't use those. Try one of these other options that I just mentioned. And I've kind of already alluded to this, but again, just to make sure I'm being very clear, be careful as far as changing settings in your browsers. The more settings you change, the higher you risk becoming unique and identifiable. And so again, we want to blend into a crowd and so if we're all using the same settings, the same browser, the same privacy browser, we'll all work together to blend in more with each other. So just be aware of that. Same thing applies to extensions. If you follow my channel, you know that I do not like extensions. I've always mentioned they are a privacy and security risk. The more extensions you install on a web browser, the more likely you become unique. So keep that in mind. And on top of all of this, make sure that you are not circumventing all of this by installing a web service app, a website's app. For example, Facebook, first off, you shouldn't be using Facebook, but if you are and you install the Facebook app on your phone, well, you've now completely circumvented any privacy benefit you get from a privacy browser because the app is just right there on your device and can just gobble up as much information as it wants. And so avoid installing apps, install as few apps as possible. If there's an internet service you do want to use or need to use, try to use it through the browser. Do everything you can to avoid installing apps on your devices. If you do install an app or do use an online service, make sure you are reviewing the privacy settings. Make sure you turn privacy to the max, toggle off what you don't need. Also look for the privacy policy and check to see if there's any opt-out options. They're usually hidden and usually require you to submit some sort of form. And then also make sure that you're being private on all of your devices. If you're just doing this on your computer, but again, as I mentioned, installing social media apps on your phone, you're just going to circumvent the privacy benefit. Or if you're doing this on your computer and and your phone, but you're not being private on your smart television, again, you're just going to circumvent and lose the privacy benefit. So make sure that you're doing this on all of your devices. And keep in mind, all the privacy browsers I mentioned, you don't have to use just one. You don't have to limit yourself to just one. There's actually a benefit from using multiple browsers. And so don't be afraid to use multiple privacy browsers. Compartmentalize. One of the nice things about Firefox-based web browsers is they often have containers that you can use to compartmentalize right there in the web browser. Also, don't be afraid to experiment with virtual machines to further compartmentalize. And with all this said and done, this is a lot that people have to do to stay private. It 
shouldn't be like this. You shouldn't have to go through all these tools, all this software, just to remain private on the internet. It's really sad that it's come to this. And so to that end, just make sure that you are one voting, but keep in mind when you are voting to try to focus on people who have some sort of value for privacy. It's very hard to find politicians that do care about privacy because government likes to spy a lot, but do the best you can. It is important. So that way they can put in policies that protect you, the user. I kind of covered this or pointed to this a little bit earlier in some ways, but getting away from fingerprinting and tracking in general is not as easy as just joining the largest crowd or trying to blend in with the largest crowd. It's also not as easy as just using the most privacy oriented OS or privacy oriented web browser or privacy oriented extensions and tools because the more privacy software you use that makes you more unique. And so there's a very definitive sweet spot of finding yourself between the largest crowd that doesn't care about privacy versus the smallest crowd that really does care about privacy and not going to either end of the spectrum but trying to find yourself in the middle is where you want to be. That is everything for this video but if you do have any comments or questions please post them down below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and please consider sharing it and if you would like to support this channel go ahead and hit that join button to become a member for as low as 99 cents a month. The thanks button, the subscribe button, or that bell notification icon to get notifications on future videos. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a great day.